Hi and welcome to this video about the must know ideas in the Karokan. Recently we have been focusing on the C5 push in the Karokan and today we are going to continue this path and today's idea is very important. Apart from that, the Grandmaster game we are going to take a look at Jean-Marc de Grave, a strong Grandmaster against Camille Mitton, saw a few very instructive tactical ideas. So watching until the very end is very important to understand the structure and the upcoming tactics which you might use in your next games already. So if you want to take a look at the previous games just click on the links in the description and feel free to browse after or before watching this video. So here in this game, we saw first e4, c6, d4, d5. Why do I say first e4 and focus on that? Because you can reach this position in a slightly different way, like the usual Parnov idea with c5. So how can you reach this? With an English move order, with first c4, c6, e4, d5, e takes d5, c takes d5, and now d4, and it's exactly the same position. So let's go back. And now black plays knight f6, knight c3. And now the move I'm advocating here is e6 for black. And as mentioned, we are going to take a look at the c5 move. And we have already done so. And you might know that black has basically two ideas after bishop e7, knight f3, castle before the two ideas are b6 and knight to e4 sometimes you can combine them not always so take care in this game we take a look at knight to e4 a deeper look into this so as mentioned earlier in other videos the knight on c3 is attacked so white must do something about it there are two good moves Bishop to b2 and queen to c2. And this game, in this game, Jean Marc played queen to c2. So now the knight on e4 is attacked. What to do? Black decides to play f5, and this is the most common move here. However, as mentioned in the other videos, knight to c6 is a very good alternative and might be a little bit stronger than f5. But we are going to look at this. In the next videos so this might be an idea and black has compensation for the piece after knight takes d4 bishop takes c5 but let's go back so f5 this was just a preview of what you can expect over the course of the next days so f5 bishop to d3 knight to c6 so this pawn is attacked a3 and now bishop to f6 knight to e2 so if you're following this channel you might know that we are just following the game Govstan against Yevgeny Postny and Yevgeny Postny decided to play a6 here and this is a very common move it's stopping b5 and I as a very solid player prefer moves or variations like this a6 move just to stop b5 however um, Kamil Mitton had prepared something else for this game. It's e5. And this move oh, sorry, hasn't been tested so much, but it's absolutely playable. Maybe a little bit more dangerous than a6, but playable. So the following sequence is pretty much forced, I believe, because bishop to b2 will guarantee not much. Actually, there is an incredible tactic here. So just think for a few moments what black should play here or could play. And then we will continue. So the incredible tactic that I found here or saw is knight takes f2. And the reason is that if the, because if the king takes, then there's e4 with this fork. So black is gaining back the piece and the king is in the center d4 
the white king and this cannot be good for white. So therefore white should watch out what is happening. And this might be well the reason why white just automatically takes on e5. Then knight takes on e5, knight takes on e5, bishop takes e5 and now you see the rook on a1 is attacked and the bishop is not only attacking the rook on a1 but also inserting pressure on the king's side so white just wants to exchange them with bishop to b2. So after the bishops are exchanged you can see that on the one hand white has this pawn side majority uh, excuse me the queen side majority of the pawns it's three against two as you can see here on the other hand white is already well developed white just needs to castle and then put the rooks on good places and might maybe improve the knight here on the other hand black has castled but the rooks are not connected the queen is still on d8 and black is facing this free against two which is very dangerous for black so therefore black should immediately play on the king side and try to attack the king but let's look what happens if black just ignores this with a move like a5 then white would castle queen to g5 trying to put some pressure on the king rook fd1 you might not want to clear this oh sorry this f1 square for the king just in case bishop e6 rook ac1 and all these moves here you can see are following one plan and it's pushing the queen side pawns so let's take let's say a takes b4 a takes b4 king h8 and now there's basically one piece which is not well developed and it's the knight here so knight d4 bishop f7 and now the pawns are already rolling so as you can see black is not in time to mess around with moves like a5 he must play very dynamically in this very own moment so therefore black plays f4 trying to break the king's side of white and this is the weakness of white that the king isn't very safe if black plays this correctly f4 very important and now a very typical move for the structure and we have already seen it knight to d4 taking control over f3 but also generally putting the knight on a much better square than e2 d4 is the natural square for the knight in this structure queen to g5 and now black is trying to gain something on the king's side but it's very dangerous because you can see that there's also this queen hinting at or hitting at um, g7 so let's say knight f3 and queen takes g2 this is a mistake because it rook to g1 and we are already threatening checkmate on g7 if the queen moves from the file so let's say queen takes here on f3 then queen takes g7 mate therefore this is not working what about the alternatives uh, what about casting is this working well f3 looks very dangerous g3 queen h5 rook e1 and you according to the engine you can survive this but it's the engine and not a human being so very dangerous so this is also not working in this position so therefore just knight f3 and as we have seen taking on g2 is just not possible because of rook um, g1 and queen takes g7 mate so therefore queen h5 was played by camille mitton and white decides to castle queen side and this looks dangerous but it's the best move for white let's take a look at the alternative shot cast this doesn't work because of bishop h3 and the king is going to be very open in a couple of moves very dangerous so therefore queenside castle and now 
it's very important that black just questions the c5 pawn with b6 because as you can see the king is on c1 so of course white doesn't want to open up the c file and plays probably c6 and then follows just queen h6 so maybe putting some pressure against the king if the knight moves there might be pawn pushes with check and the pawn on g2 would be very annoying and also this attack on no let's make it red sorry queen takes c6 check so b5 automatically play to defend the pawn and that might come a6 king to b1 a takes b5 knight d4 and knight to c5 and the position is around equal and the king doesn't feel that safe but black has his own issues the structure doesn't look too promising with all these weaknesses so let's go back to the game instead bishop to g4 was played a very understandable move putting pressure against uh, the f3 knight but actually this is bad let's see why just rook he1 bishop takes f3 g takes f3 queen takes f3 wins a pawn but it's very dangerous because of queen to b3 a brilliant move and this is exactly the reason why i told you to watch this until the end because here you can see what is going on queen b3 looks like a quiet move it's pinning the pawn so pinning the defender defending this bishop and threatening rook takes e4 because the queen would be forced to take back and then bishop takes queen and this would be very bad as you can imagine so there might follow king h8 but after queen takes d5 white just regained the pawn and has a very active placement of pieces so what should black do for example knight d2 a desperate attempt to exchange queens but even exchanging queens only leads to a very bad position for black because of rookie seven and now white pieces are much more active and black has very big issues so let's go back oh bishop to c2 plate and this is a mistake and we will see why and it's very obvious it's just knight takes f2 and the idea of white was probably that he has this discovery check on h7 but then queen took queen takes f2 and now very simple a5 and the position isn't that good for white anymore b5 played still dreaming about the past pawn but more importantly not opening up the queen side because this king would feel very endangered there so better keep it closed queen h5 putting pressure on f3 but also defending the d5 pawn h3 played bishop to d7 hitting this pawn white must do something defends it with a4 then comes rook a c8 threatening to take and white played rook h e1 and d4 and now white should really take this pawn this position looks crazy but actually it's equal after rook takes c5 king b2 now the bishop is under attack and should be defended somehow this would be equal however in the game rook e5 was played and now i will give you a couple of seconds again try to find the best move for black black to move and win the game very fast so the move played here was rook takes c5 check and white just resigned here and it's very understandable because after let's say rook takes c5 there's just queen takes c5 and now you can see white has rook queen knight four pawns against rook queen bishop five pawns but more importantly all 
these pawns on the queen side are weak and also the king has to move and also the king is very weak so actually the sad thing about this position is black can decide how to win well the easiest way which you might choose even without calculating might be queen to b4 check and now the king cannot really move because wherever it moves it's running into dangerous checks and here for example already the queen must be sacrificed but maybe black can win it even faster so for example just ignore the queen for the moment and capture this pawn yeah so even if you don't calculate in this position it's a great position therefore white just gave up after rook takes c5 as always i hope you enjoyed this video if you want to know more about this structure click on the play list next to me and if you want to see more of such content feel free to subscribe and like the video see you